Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the open forum question and answer. So if, uh, if you have a question for one of our candidates, I'm, I'm just going to um, set a little, uh, I guess, kind of some ground rules. First of all, first, no, uh, no, no bombs, no grenades, no loaded questions. Let's try to try to keep it, uh, you know, reasonably friendly and polite. And also, um, when you stand as your question, if you would uh, state your name, to whom the question is addressed, and then the question. Yes, sir. My name is Jack Dixon. I'd like all three candidates to address this question. And I'm concerned over toll roads. It seems like North Texas is being all around the toll roads. And I'd like to hear each candidate's thoughts on how we move forward and provide the infrastructure that Mark wants that still avoid the massive toll roads. Thank you. I guess I have the microphone, so I should answer that first. Uh, I'm certainly with you on that. I am not a big fan of toll roads myself. I would love for all toll roads to be like I-30 was. You know, once the debt service is done, then take the toll away. I would love for that to be the case in every toll road that we have. Uh, Dallas North Tollway, as you know, has been paid for over and over again. They just keep extending the road and, and keep extending mean, the pay. Having to, uh, to pay for those. Uh, and the people that are using the old part of the road are still paying. How many times over and over that's happened? Uh, unfortunately, the way that the transportation funding is done uh, in, this, in the state, uh, there's just not enough money for roads. Uh, I do not like it when a public road is turned into a toll road. Uh, we go in, we do managed lanes, we do different things, and it, it, it really is a problem. Uh, these are public roads. I don't want to turn into toll roads. Um, there's also many other things that we could address. We've got the outer loop and how we're going to fund that. That's like a $4 billion project. It's a, a big project here in the county. It's like the upside down L that goes through the county, through the northern part and down on the eastern side of the county. But um, certainly, I agree with you. I think it's a problem. We're going to have to do something. I think part of it is the gasoline tax. We've got, I think it's 47% of the gasoline tax is not used on the roads. You know, it goes to education. It goes to many other things, and I think that's a big problem. We need to be lobbying down in Austin, you know, to figure out a different way to fund education, to figure out a different way to fund our transportation. We have got problems. I concur. We have a huge problem. There is no adequate funding at the federal or state level for transportation. We've been kicking the can down the road for a long time, and the answer are the toll roads that you see. Not only toll roads, they are now placing managed toll lanes on what has historically been freeways. I find that very problematic, but it is what it is. Um, COG, I believe last year, I don't, I don't have my notes with me, they're in my purse, but I believe that uh, the, the, we're at 1.1, according to Mobility 2035 billion, with the, that is needed uh, and and the region is at four billion. So we are way behind on transportation. These are huge numbers, and we have got to lobby the legislature. They have got to get serious. They have got to talk about transportation, and we've got to assess where we are, stop diversions. We have to come up with ways to fund our roads. Texas is the last bastion of freedom, and people should not be taxed by the, by the mile for the personal mobility. I, I do not agree with that, and I have a huge problem with that. I think we all agree on, on the majority of this. Um, the problem is we don't have the funding from the federal government and the state government that we need. So we built these toll roads. Um, nobody likes them. There's a lot of toll fatigue in Collin County. I can't imagine what people spend that live in the northern part of the county have to go to downtown Dallas every month. It's like a car payment, I guess. The reality is we need transportation infrastructure that takes decades. And literally, this is what I've learned on the planning board. The outer loop, for instance, that's the that's in its infancy. And it'll take 30 or 40 years to build that if it, if it ever gets built. It took 30 years to build 121. So we've got to look way out into the future. And people don't think about it until you're having to wait three times to get through the stop line. So, I don't have the solution. 
but we've got to first off make sure I do everything we can to get the legislature to spend the money, spend the tax dollars that are collected for transportation infrastructure on transportation infrastructure. Both of y'all mentioned that. The shortfall, or the monies that they take from transportation, from the uh, gas tax and from the, the uh, vehicular sales tax, if that money was put back into the roads, it would go a long way towards solving the problem that we have. Not <coughs> good, but it would help a, a tremendous amount. But the legislature doesn't have, doesn't appear to have the uh, will to do that. So that's that's my preference. If we do end up with toll roads, to me it's critical. Two things are critical. One is that we don't toll roads that were built with tax dollars. That's double taxation, and that's just simply wrong. There, there's legislation that exists that's supposed to prevent that. But the legislature continues to water that down and make it easier and easier for the possibility of tolling a road that is previously built with tax dollars. The other, no, I have a senior moment here. The other issue is uh, yes, we don't want to privatize the profits from toll roads and socialize the debt. The devil is in the detail on toll road contracts with companies. If a company wants to come in, and build a toll road and invest billions of dollars to do so and make the profits from that investment, then they need to be on the hook for the risk, not the citizens. That that's what's wrong. Okay. Thanks. Um, I'm gonna modify the rules because the, the three candidate questions get a little long. Um, one candidate questions get a little long. Yes. Boils for Mr. Reed. You stated that of the projects you'd like to address, foremost among them was employee compensation. Could you elaborate a little bit more on what all that entails and what your plans for that are? Sure. Uh, the employees are now on a pay for performance plan. They used to be on a step plan, which basically meant you, you got a raise for staying alive another year. <laughs> That's a little simple, sorry. Um, However, we're on, a, we're on a performance compensation plan and it creates some difficulties for some of the areas like the sheriff's office. We want to retain good sheriff's deputies. We want to retain good employees. So I want to look at those programs, look at those systems, and try and find a way to provide salary, a salary plan that will keep the good sheriff's officers that we have but won't reward people simply for existing for another year. There's got to be a way to do that. Uh, we did it in our business, and I think we can do it in law enforcement as well. Thanks. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Major Martin, I have a question for, I have a question really is for all three because it, it's, it's just a general principle of what we think about eminent domain issues. I know that's kind of calmed down in the last year or two, but I've been victim of uh, that four times. I've won a lot of But each time it's been for uh, roads and things like that, it's bad enough. But if somebody took my property to give it to someone else to build a shopping mall, I think I'd have a stroke. What's your feelings on the domain issues? Thank you for that question. Um, I can certainly understand your angst with that. I completely concur with you, and I think that's wrong, uh, especially in a situation. There's times when it has to happen. I don't get me wrong. There's a road that needs to be built. You know, there's times when, when that has to happen. When it's for economic development and for some private individual to build a road, that's one thing. Property is what we is responsible for the freedoms that we enjoy. Without private property, we are nothing more than serfs. The problem with eminent domain is many times you're not compensated adequately. They say, well, if it, this is what's fair, and they'll get a committee together and, and have these people determining what your property is. How dare them? Okay, and they'll also tell you, especially look out if they're 
a hand in glove with the PUC, like Encore and PUC when they were bringing wind energy to North Texas. That happened to some friends of mine up in Salina, and they were going to put these big uh, utility lines right uh, uh, through their horse property. You know, people don't want nice horses under power lines, okay? Whether, whatever that science is, that's for another day. But people don't like it. But I read the packet, and you would not believe the language and how aggressive. They say, if you don't like it, meet us in Austin. Feel free at any point in this deal to hire an attorney, and we'll see you in Austin. You think you can go up against the pockets of Encore and the PUC? Good luck to you. That's a problem. We have to keep uh, being good advocates of property rights and fight like heck. How about I heard it. You got the ones that are trying to get into. Well, I'm going to um, close the question and answer section uh, there so that we can uh, get out of time. And, you know, I, just, I was just standing here looking at you guys, listening to these uh, candidates, and thinking to myself, what a country, what a county. Thank you all. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.